<laughs> Will Farrell <laughs> and John C. Riley are here. They're joined by writer director Adam McKay. Together they make the powerhouse team that brought the hilarious Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby, to theaters in 2006. Now they are reunited with a new comedy, Step Brothers. And here is what you've been waiting for the trailer. When their parents got married, Brennan and Dale became stepbrothers. Columbia Pictures invite you to celebrate the good times. If you were a chick, who's the one guy you would sleep with? John Samos. What? Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yup. The bad times. What are you doing? I'm burying you. Oh, I Waking the neighbors! Shut up! And especially the bedtimes. This is how we do it. I am pleased to have Will Farrell, John C. Riley, and Adam McKay here to talk about this movie. It's a drama, right? It is a gripping drama. A gripping drama. Uh, a drama that I don't know the likes have never been seen before. I mean, Shakespearean, Chekhovian. Uh... Uh, kind of like a political look, thriller. Political yeah. thriller. Yeah. 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 Political yeah. thriller. Yeah. 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 We all agree it's a political thriller. Yeah. 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 Family yeah. politics. Yeah. Laugh out loud politics. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. That's the plan. That a is lot the plan. of a lot of gasps in the theater. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. It's yeah. A, it's it's an intense yeah, movie. Yeah. Now where yeah. did this movie start? Was this you guys sitting around the table and said, "Let's make another one." It, or are you that, guys sitting around saying, let's make another that's one? That's pretty much and it. I remember how good Don C., yeah. how, how much fun he was to have with us in that's, Talladega. So you let's got get the story. him, too. You got the story. That's, uh, that's how movie, that's how great movie, our mail, That's how great movies start, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, the three of us had so much fun doing Talladega Nights that uh, we started talking, mm -hmm. as is the case, I think, in a lot of movies that are enjoyable, that you you start talking like, we should do it again. and But it usually never... People never follow through, uh, but we actually did at the, at John. John kind of drove the train. Did you really? Said, well, come on, guys. Yeah, I think I pr probably because I'm, I I've done more movies than the, these guys, so I've had more scenarios where people go, yeah, I really liked Let's working here. Let's do yeah, it again. Right. And I, fi I finally, I, when we did Talladega, it was such, I realized it was such a rare and special thing that we all got along as well as we did, and we all made each other laugh as much as we did, that we really should try to do it again. And... And yeah. uh, here we are. And so tell me, take me to how this kind of thing starts. So you say, why don't we do it again? We right. need a script. Right. So <laughs> we go to dinner. Yes. Right. Come we back go, after dinner, you got a script. We go to dinner. Yeah, we come back. There's a service you pay. <laughs> yes. uh, I think called Scriptco. Yeah. Scriptco. And uh, they Scriptco. deliver. Com. Yeah, you give them the idea and they yes. deliver it within four to six you weeks. You order an appetizer, <laughs> an entree, a script of your choice, and right. dessert. Dessert. And it comes with a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 1999. Yeah, we sat down, we, we kind of pitched a bunch of different ideas. A number of which we we, we really liked. Uh, well, no, we and and then it was actually Adam who called us the next day. He was like, I thought of one other thing. What if, what if you guys are, you know, two forty-year-old guys still live at home, yeah. with a single parent, and and they meet each other, fall in love, and you're forced to be stepbrothers. Right. And we both were like, oh. That beats everything we talked about <laughs> last night. So yeah. that, that, uh, beats, that beats the 1999 special. That, then. Completely, completely, yeah. and uh, and that and and then you know we just we we would meet and kind of throw in all these ideas and Adam and I kind of distilled them. The three of us came up with a story and then we wrote the script. Okay, what's the story, Adam? Story? Beyond what we already know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's uh, yeah. two grown men who live with their single parents. Yeah. The uh, single parents meet, fall in love, get married, and rather than move on with their adult lives as they should, they stay together yeah. and uh, become stepbrothers, and hijinks ensue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you do, you've done a lot of drama as well as comedy. Sure. Do you like this better? Well, you know, I like variety, to tell you the mm -hmm. truth. That's really, I mean, that's what I set out to do as an actor. I'm not one of those people that plays my personality over and over again. I, I, I just, I, all I know how to be is a chameleon, so the... The bigger the change is, the happier I am. Um, that said, comedy is actually a lot harder <laughs> than drama. And I really, I mean, I respected these guys and really I thought they were hilarious before we worked together. But now, having been in the trenches of comedy with them, it, it is a discipline that uh, it's... Would you say it's a thousand times harder? Um, <laughs> took the question right out of my mind. Thousand, yes. Yeah. At least. Say, at right? least a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is it harder? <laughs> well, because... It, there is this exacting 
truth <laughs> about comedy. It's either funny or it isn't. The people around you are either laughing and amused by what you're doing or they're not. And drama, you can do a scene and there's a little bit of wiggle room in there according to how the audience is interpreting what you're doing or whether they relate to the experience that you're portraying or, you know, so there's a little, there's a little more room and it's a little gentler in terms of like the audience's response to it. Comedy, like if, if you ever read these blogs on, on the internet about comedy, a movie coming out or whatever, <laughs> if people don't get the joke, they are angry. You know, they're yeah. like, <laughs> the, so vituperative, like all this like yeah. bile comes out. but. Uh, yeah, so in drama, people are just a little more like, well, that's not my cup of tea, whatever. But if it's not your cup of tea and it's a comedy, people, like, they get, I don't know, insecure or something. But, mm. but yeah, so, so uh, and, you know, the other thing that's, that's, that's tougher about comedy than drama in general, at least working with these guys on comedy, is the improvisation. You know, that... Because they're good at that. Yeah, well, they're great at it. And <laughs> it's also like screenwriting on your feet. You know, yeah. so there are no easy days. There's no day where you just have like, oh, I just walk by somebody and then, you know, that's it. And I get to go home. It's like, no, walking by somebody is going to turn into a three page scene with these guys <laughs> and some pratfalls and well. some We're insane. Yeah, you know. we, we paid for the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you might as well make yeah. it funny. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're going to walk or by, make it, make it a funny try walk. To at least. Yeah. 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 Now, are you playing, is there anything that's always there in a Will Ferrell character? In like these movies, is, um, especially the ones that you guys have teamed up on. I don't know. Uh, it's usually a lot of false confidence. Yeah. It's usually a lot of uh, yeah, that bravado. You know, a lot of bravado, bravado right. that uh, quickly gets punctured. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, that is a central theme of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's I mean, like a lot of American cockiness, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we like to play around with a right. lot. Yeah. I, I, this character is a little bit different because I'm uh, I'm always scared. Uh, I don't know if I've ever played a character that's constantly afraid. <laughs> yes. um, and yet within that, I have little moments of like, you know, righteous indignation of like, well, I should get this <laughs> yes. just because, you know. Yes. And uh, so that, I mean, that's a little, that's a little You could almost argue that your characters in, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of them, Anchorman and Talladega, they don't want to show they're afraid. You know, no. Part of yeah. the act is the bravado yeah. to say, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. Yeah, and that's kind of where the, you know, they're, they're always uh, pretty vulnerable characters, too. You know, we always show that they're, they're in over their heads a little bit, and, uh, and that vulnerability comes through, usually. This is where we're going to show a scene where the two of you are turning your beds into bunk beds. What need I say more about this scene? <laughs> well... <laughs> That yeah, that says a lot. I mean, this is, this, is, this, is the, this, yes. this is, as John describes, the greatest night ever. Um, we finally become friends. At first, there's a big standoff and rivalry yeah. between us where we kind of torture each other, and then we come to realize that we love each other shortly before <laughs> we get the idea <laughs> that we should turn our individual beds into bunk beds. Which will, which will give us, our, our rationale is it'll give us a lot more room for activities. You I know, got it. I think we don't need to okay. say anything else. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Roll tape. Hey, do it over there. Really good. Okay. Did your son know anything about carpentry? No, not a, not a. Did, you go it? did I hear a drill? Yeah. Dale. Power tools. Dale, no power tools. Oh, what? No power tools. You know what? I forgot to brush my teeth. That is not your toothbrush. Oh, okay. Well, I'm all done anyway. We did it. We did it. It looks amazing. Look at that. That looks like what you would buy from a store. It should have been Look a at all this floor all space. So you much. Do aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin. How many activities we can do? Play army man. Yeah. This is how we do it. Da, 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 da. Hey, I never asked you. Yeah. Do you like guacamole? Ah! Oh, run! Oh God! Run! Run! This is R-rated. It is R-rated. Yeah. Where is the sex? We uh, there's a little bit of sex in there. <laughs> Where is the sex? <laughs> Come on. America wants the really wants the sex. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's some R-rated, there. right? Yeah. Or is it violence? What should we expect? There's violence, uh, emotional tribulation, and there is a little bit of sex in there. Yeah. yeah. There's and some. There's some blue language. Yeah. Some blue yes. language. And there's some language will do it. And there's some uh, some nudity, partial nudity. Yeah. Who could that be? Specific partial nudity. Partial surprisingly, frontal male nudity. Surprisingly, it's me. <laughs> mm. You exhibitionist. 
I can't help. I got it in my blood. <laughs> if you got it, flaunt it. Right, right. right. Yeah. Now, they say to me that finding chemistry between people on stage, film, television, is the hardest thing in the world to do. You guys have that. Right? You know, John and I, as, as well as Adam, just we share the same comedic sensibility. We, uh, you know, the first time I met John, uh, you know, we kind of we kind of hit it off just as as friends, and uh, and then we'd been trying for the longest time to get to work with John C. Riley. We kept saying, yeah. "God, that guy would be great to work with," and uh, and and completely exceeded our expectations, which were which were already. You know, pretty high. Now, why did you say that? I mean, was it a part he played, a persona he had, I think or just pure skill? A lot. Well, a lot of it was boogie nights. I mean, I think yeah. that performance is yes. There was a lot of improv in it. We could tell he was an ensemble and player. And, yeah. and Are you very serious? fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, a really funny performance as well as you know. A nice piece of acting. A nice piece of acting. That was good. <laughs> good. Yeah, that was good. You did now, a nice piece now, of acting. You get, have you one. gotten a lot of <laughs> delicious? Nice little, little piece of acting. Nice little piece of acting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, he knows but a he, nice piece of acting when he, he sees one, said, don't you? I, I do. I do. And I'll often point it out to my fellow <laughs> theater members, theater goers. I'll say to this, theater goers, this is, this is a, a nice piece of acting. Please stop talking to me. I was thinking the same thing when I was watching Will on Saturday Night Live, which is where I was first exposed to his work. And I, I remember thinking... A nice piece of an next post, too. A nice to. piece of acting. That is a chunk of acting. Look at that. A cut of acting. Nice yeah. Cut. Yeah. 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 It has a nice a marbled, meaty hunk of acting. marbled cut <laughs> yeah. of acting. And so what did you see on Saturday well, Night Live? Well, I just saw that he and Molly Shannon and a couple of the people in the cast, I was like, you know, this is a different group of people than I've been on Saturday Night mm -hmm. Live before. They're not comedians necessarily, they're actors. Mm. that are doing funny material, but I just loved the level of commitment that Will brought to his work. And I, I even before they contacted me, I thought, like, I got to... I gotta work with him. Like he, he, I know he thinks the same way as I do. <laughs> did you? And then when I did, did you meet really? him, yeah, yeah. And then when I did meet him, I said, I, I brought. I've up been the, loving you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> From afar. From afar. <laughs> and then when I met him, I brought up a couple of specific things on the show that I'd seen. Like, what about this one? What? Who wrote that? Why did you come up with that? And every time I said yeah. that, he would say, "That's McKay." That's I was going to say, I mean, "Did you know McKay was writing all this stuff?" Oh, I found out through Will. <laughs> yeah. And I realized, like, they're they're. Yeah. Demented like me. Yeah. Yeah. And then he did the uh, read through for Anchorman and kind of blew us away. Obviously, he didn't do the movie, but that was the first time we were kind of introduced to John in one yeah. of our movies. And so, why didn't you hire him? Uh, he had to go do a movie with this guy, Scorsese, I think, I think his name is. Yeah. 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 So, you know, Scorsese. 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 Yeah. Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, what was he's it? A, the, uh, the, he's an uh, Italian director? He's an Italian director. Um, yeah. I think he's got chops. You do. Uh, There's potential there. Yeah. The jury's yeah. still out on Heavy. him. <laughs> All right, let's go see another scene. This one is about a job interview. Roll tape. Dad, um, I need to borrow some clothes for the interview because I don't have any fancy clothes. You go to my closet, you take whatever you need. You okay. too, Brennan. You guys got to look sharp. This is the most important day of our lives, Rock. okay? Okay, Dad. Well, Brennan, you certainly have had a lot of jobs. I'm a bit of a spark plug and a human resources lady. Oh, oh you know, think... it, it's actually, it's Pam. I'm sorry. Well, Pan. No, my name is Pam. Are you saying Pan or Pam? I'm saying Pam. Yeah, I'm sorry, who is this gentleman sitting behind you? Hello, Ms. Lady. I'm Dale. I'm Brennan's stepbrother, and I think I might be able to help with the Pan Pam dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pam. 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 With There's an M. There's a D on the end. There's no D. It's Pam. It's like calm. Here, it's P. P-A-N-M. M. 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 Two M's. M. That was the confusion. No, there's just one M. I, oh, okay, I think we've had enough here. Shut, shut for here. one second. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. I needed someone Wait, to shut your mouth. Shut, shut, your, shut your mouth. I'm sorry? What did You're you just You're just coming say? off stupid. I'm coming off as stupid. You're wearing tuxedos to a job that requires you to clean bathrooms. Please leave this office. We're done with this interview. Do we get any sort of souvenir? Get out of my office! Did you write all of that? We wrote the initial idea. We that being they, the three uh, of you, or Will, we being you and Will and John. I think all three of us maybe came up with that idea, and it was just the joke of the pan pan. Mm -hmm. So the dro joke drove the scene. Exactly, and then the joke of shush your mouth, and we just love the idea of politely telling someone to shut up. Yeah, kept making us laugh. Like, <laughs> hold on, Charlie, shut up for one second, you know. And uh, so we just kept playing around with that, and yeah. improv sort of shot off the initial premise. Worked as a scene, didn't it? It did. Yeah. 
Another nice piece of acting. Cool, nice little piece of yeah, acting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fun thing about these characters, like they just refuse to accept reality. Yeah. No matter yeah. what it was, oh, yeah. we're just like, yeah. you know, what if someone's telling us the what, what the real yeah. truth is? I'm like, no, yeah. no. Nah, yeah. nah, That's our nah. coping mechanism, I yeah. guess. Yeah. That's our yeah. what? Coping mechanism. Oh, coping. Yeah. 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 Now, where did the idea for the tuxedo come from? I think when when we were when we got to that point where okay, these guys have to go and you know. Their, their parents forced them. To, they set up these job interviews. Uh, I know Adam and I were talking about what <laughs> what would be the most off-putting outfit to wear, and uh, and because we I think we'd had the thing of Richard Jenkins' character, like you can you can dress nice, look, you know, and that their interpretation of looking the best we could would be let's wear tuxedos. Yes, that, they have it's no, classy. No clue how to deal with the job market at all. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's right, the first right. time probably they've ever been on real interviews. So, <laughs> yeah, so. like, we got to do this right. We yeah. have to dress nice. Right. I think we played with them being shirtless at one point. Right. Uh, Which but that was seemed that was going into pure insanity. At least there was yeah. some logic connected yeah. to this. Here's what you said about him, Adam. Will. Will will do an infomercial if it will make him laugh. All the traditional ways people look at careers ascending or not going well, none of it applies. So long as the work is interesting to him. He's fine any way you cut it. It's kind of true. And yeah. Yeah, I would say that's... You've done some great infomercials. Have you seen some of those? <laughs> For hair care products? Oh, boy. Oh, Amazing. That's fantastic. Changed my hair. Yeah, good. See? You, yes. It's a public well, service. It used to look like what? I was straight and long. It didn't have any volume or any bounce to it. No shine. You had a ponytail for a while, right? Yeah. 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 Thanks to Will. Yeah. 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 I can see him in a ponytail, can't you? I think it would look good. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. Maybe he can go back. with a ponytail? Yeah. With a very thin, wispy beard. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. I think we just came up with my next character. <laughs> Good. Well, is this the way things work in Hollywood? You just say it's the way it table. works with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we're joking around like we're supposed to be a scene in a movie where my father decides he's finally leaving the house, and the scene was in the script was written. They say goodbye to their father. Dale says goodbye to his father. I hug him and he leaves. And well, I got it in my head like, no, I don't want him to leave. So I just started improvising, <clears throat> trying to stop the car. And then it, it got worse and worse where the, he was going down the driveway and I was like trying to stop the car. And then Will, right before we go, like, I think I should throw the 10-speed bike at the car. <laughs> and I was like, what? And we were like, maybe we should check with Adam. Adam, should we throw the 10-speed bike at the car? Yeah, 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 you should idea. totally oh, do that. Absolutely. <laughs> then our prop guy runs over and goes, no, we only have one of those one bikes. bikes. <laughs> and I'm still like, throw it anyway. Definitely throw it. <laughs> All right, one more clip. This is when you have been fighting in the backyard. Here it is. <laughs> ah! <laughs> You're alive! Oh, my God! I'm alive. <laughs> you were dead. I saw you die. I was faking. I use ninja focus to slow my heart rate down. What are you doing? I'm burying you. I'm alive, I'm alive. You're waking the neighbors. No. Shut up. No. Now I'm going to play your drum set. Help me. Close your eyes. Let the dirt just shower over you. This is your fault. I remember there was a moment when I was sitting in that grave thinking like, how did I get? We're doing a comedy, and now I'm underground <laughs> in a <laughs> makeshift grave. How did they talk in my underwear? Anything? How did this happen? You have a sandwich in there. Yeah, yeah, they gave me a grilled cheese sandwich. sandwich yourself, down there. Well, you know, it's funny because th th that's a common thing in the in in our press travels, where reporters will say, "Like you're a serious actor. <laughs> yes. What are you doing? <laughs> yes. You're a serious actor." S slumming. And you know, the, the, the slumming. Truth yeah. is, slumming. <laughs> you know, there was a point like in the 1940s where everyone wanted to play the trumpet, and then at some point in the in the 1960s, everyone would play the electric guitar, and that became well. In the film world, it seems like all the great minds right now have moved to comedy, and these guys are some of the smartest people I know, right. some of the most politically engaged people I know, some of the most subversive people I know. And you know, we compare that to some of the dramas that are coming my way. It's a little bit of a snooze compared to the you know the, <laughs> these guys are really exciting to work with. So subversive, you said. Yeah, very subversive. In what way? Well. It's subversive in the literal definition of the word, I and mean, upturning the established oh, gotcha. order. Right. You know, like they take they take what, very mundane situations, and somehow by the end of it, you're like, "This is wrong. Something's wrong." <laughs> like, <laughs> in, both in Talladega and this one, they, whether it's a story convention or a type of character, or, 
Yeah, they just take things and tweak it enough so that it gets into that absurd place where it seems familiar but wrong at the same time. Is there a balance somewhere between saying I'm going to take some risk here or I'm going to go for the thing that I know I do best? Well, I mean, I know in, in terms of the stuff Adam and I have done together, we always were just challenging ourselves to like either A, figure out something that we've never seen in a movie before, uh, or, or B, you know, just once again, go against the conventions that is, that are, you know, established movie making. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, uh, we always, you know, there, I, I think there are certain ways that people instruct you how films are supposed to be made and I don't know if that's right for the story and, but so many times we're like, well, it's just funny. Why can't yeah, we just right. do it that way? So that was kind of been our goal to kind of break all that up in a way. Yeah, we always laugh about the idea that there's a professional crew there that gets paid a lot of money, that are in a lot of serious movies, and they all have to sit there holding lights and microphones while we do this insanely idiotic, crazy, <laughs> bizarre scene. Which they love. Which they end up loving, of course, mm -hmm. but the, the whole, it's almost like making the movie in of, of itself is kind of a joke. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we kind of take pleasure in our bad reviews, too, where people get really angry about the film, really make us laugh as well. That having been said, this this film is kind of, I mean, it's, we kind of stumbled across, it wasn't the goal of the film, but in a weird way, we're kind of commenting on this phenomenon that is happening mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of adult children still living at home. Exactly. Or having yeah. to move back, and uh, so we kind of backed into yeah. so, that. Something that people can yeah, recognize exactly. and deal with yeah. all the time. Yeah. Well, the fact that our uh, president, too, wears a cowboy hat, you know, which if you think about it is like half a step off a pirate hat. <laughs> uh, the question of what it means to be grown up is kind of yeah, a, just, a real thing. Is this thing. the political opinions you were talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good example. He literally wears a cowboy hat. Like, if he was a real cowboy, that sure. wouldn't be so odd. Yeah. No. But, but it's, cowboys it's, don't exist anymore. And yeah. Well, yeah. six-year-olds dress up like them. But otherwise, yeah, it's six, fine. Six-year-olds do. Yeah. yeah, astronauts, firemen. <laughs> Those all exist, though. <laughs> Those are real jobs. Exactly. Those are real jobs. Yeah. Yeah. How did you two find each other? Uh, we found each other in the Army Reserve. Uh, <laughs> was, was, right? Really? Yeah. We were stationed in Mississippi. Yeah. Laying sandbags during a flood. Come on. And we looked at each other and like, what's up, partner? <laughs> it's exactly right. Are you feeling what I'm feeling? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's sort of it, wasn't it? Uh, that, no, we, There's a little uh, something going on. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, Adam and I got hired at the same time at Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Oh. For the 95, 96 now you season. Had, you tried out as an actor, didn't you? I did. I originally auditioned as no, an no, actor. Audition was a word. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like trial, though. Well, well, it's a sports connotation <laughs> yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I didn't do impressions, or I didn't do big characters, so I brought scripts with me. It was like, I write. Yeah. And uh, they and got they... hired as a writer. Yeah. Thank God. But it was the same thank day. God. Thank What's God. Thank God. You say, thank God, because? I brought the scripts. Yeah. <laughs> if I hadn't brought the scripts, I would not have had a job. So I was smart <laughs> to do that. Oh, I see. Yeah. I thought, thank God, because in the end, it put you in a direction you would much rather be in. I would say semi-thank God to that as well. But mainly mm. that I brought the scripts and got a job. <laughs> Didn't have to go back to Chicago being semi-broke. Was this from Second City? or This was. So we were getting a little, I think we were getting paid $300 a week at Second City. And mm. uh, I was living in a uh, sharing apartment with a roommate uh, in Bucktown. That was the dirtiest, filthiest apartment you've ever seen. So, yeah, getting hired was huge. It was really exciting. And, and literally the first night we went out and got beers to celebrate, this dude yeah. was there. Yeah. 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 This dude was there with the beer, or there was... He was the bartender. <laughs> he was a bartender. Uh, he was the bartender. He gave us some potato yeah. skins and said, congrats, and so, guys. And so uh, that night began the Actually, not at all, right? No, it was, no, uh, it was a very slow, uh, <clears throat> very slow kind of uh, kind of build in a way, because Adam, there was a big group of kind of Second City hmm. that was hired, and uh, and then myself and Sherry O'Terry came from the Growling, so we were, we were literally the only people who knew each other, and... Uh, and I was very, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a little shy, to be honest, when I first got on the show. And, and uh, down at this one end of the hallway were all the Chicago people and doing their bits and like, <laughs> right. da, 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 just like we, we gales of laughter. And I was like, oh, I wonder what it's like down there. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you say you and, thought Will was a straight man? Yeah. Like you thought he was hired these, as a straight man? These guys man? were immediately <laughs> familiar. Or yeah. are, are, are comfortable with being in the surroundings where yeah. I was like, wow, this is Saturday Night Live. But uh, 
Yeah, we thought he was the straight man. We thought, oh, <laughs> every cast has some guy who's going to play against all the other stuff. And he seems like a fine young man. <laughs> and yeah, why did you think he was a straight man? Because just, you know, like yeah. you said, he was a little shy. We're yeah. all new. We're, we're doing bits. We're oh, joking right, around. Yeah. He really wasn't as much. And then the first read through, it was like kaboom. It was Over. like five or six of the funniest characters you've ever seen. Yeah. Started hanging with us more, doing yeah. more bits. Didn't you actually plan? Didn't you say, I'm going to do bits with these guys? I'm going to joke around? Or I Yeah, I made it like a concerted effort to like, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to go with, with yeah. the outgoing cool kids here at school, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to get out of my shell. And, uh, but I remember, you know, the, f the first read-through for this, which was essentially a brand-new cast and a brand-new writing staff, was such a feeling of relief for me because, you know, I was able to actually hmm. hide behind these characters and get out there and, and at least I thought I would, you know, show a side of myself that no one had seen, and, uh, and luckily that was the case. When you leave Saturday Night Live, do you always feel an obligation to come back? I mean, is there something about that experience that it, um, it brings you back? At yeah, I periodically? mean, it's, it's you know, I think I think it just tends to happen that way. You know, they they're always you know excited if you come back uh, if you're promoting something or uh, and it's a you know it's a big part of our lives uh, for for seven years. You know, both professionally and personally, we made. A lot of friendships that we're still kind of relying upon uh, in the comedy world now, and uh, and it was, uh, you know, I, I knew we all knew it was like the hardest yet best job we probably would ever have in a way. Uh, just and the, how exciting and the most it was. fun and the best the most community fun of actors and, and and all that stuff, and and also most frustrating too, you know, at times. Uh, Why frustrating? Uh, just with you know, with that many comedic voices under one roof, there's mm -hmm. going to be. Hardship, and, uh, <laughs> competition, <laughs> competition, and uh, airtime, and airtime. Even though I have to say, like we, we, the show was at such a place that it really was a an all for one, one for all type of feeling. There really wasn't, uh, you know, it was a good group. Yeah. yeah, it was not that old style competition, backstabbing kind of thing. It was like Molly Shannon and him yeah. and Anna Gasteyer, and everyone was pretty supportive. But there is only an hour and a half that you can mm -hmm. have, and so. You're going to get your stuff cut, and feelings are going to hurt, and yeah. and so that that's the part you have to learn to ride. Yeah. I remember Eddie Murphy once said, he said, "I don't care how much airtime. I just want to make sure that when I get out there, I knock it out of the park." Yeah. You know, I don't know whether that's a general. Yeah, that, well, that's I, really smart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the way to play it. I made a point too to tell these guys, like, just so you know, I don't mind doing the little parts. Like, I can deliver a pizza in a scene, uh, because I think there was some of the cast members would be like, mm -hmm. uh -uh, "Not me, no." One Get of the funniest else. moments, <laughs> our, yeah. our first season, I, me. I had written a sketch where he was off camera doing a voice, so he wasn't even on camera, mm -hmm. just yelling at this gubernatorial candidate played by Alec Baldwin who had accidentally shot Lassie and was trying to explain <laughs> that it was okay. <laughs> See, I liked the scene already. <laughs> yeah, it was a great scene. <laughs> and he was just yelling off camera, you shot Lassie, we don't care. <laughs> it never was he on camera. And after the scene, Farrell comes up to me and goes, hey, if you ever have any more of those off camera lines, I really like doing those. You are something. I'm like, this guy is the greatest so cast member. Fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> he shot Lassie! <laughs> that was your voice. Yeah. That was the one you yeah, liked. Yeah, I was part of the press, the press pool. Yeah. So when will you see, when will we see a movie from you guys? What's the next movie? Have we, have we sat down to think about this? We no? have not. We have not. No. We'll do it again, though. Okay. Well, come yeah. here at this yeah. table. We're playing it here. Yeah. Thank you. You want to be in it, Charlie? No. Okay. No. For sure. <laughs> We'll, we'll think about it. Okay, I'll do it. We'll, re we'll right. revisit. Uh, Step Brothers, and when is it open? Ah, oh, Friday, July 25th. That'd be like tomorrow. That would be. You know, tomorrow. Yes. So, congratulations. Thank Great you. Great to see you. Much, Thank you. See you. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, before we go, I want to see one thing. This is a landlord clip, courtesy of funnierdie.com. So, what is this? Well, um, it's this comedy website that Adam and I have, uh, uh, were approached about doing, and, uh, uh, it's basically just a place to put up uh, comedy shorts, and uh, um, you know, it's a it's a humor site for the most part, uh, a comedy YouTube in a way. And uh, the landlord was the inaugural video that Adam and I shot with uh, his daughter Pearl, and uh, who's two, who was She's, two at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little under two actually, oh, like yeah. uh, 22 months, I think. <laughs> yes. Very little girl. <laughs> Her yeah. debut was it? Yeah. It was. It was. <laughs> it's kind of caught fire. A roll tape. Here it is. Who's that? My landlord, Pearl. I'm really late on my rent. Oh, I'm getting out of here, man. No, She's no, nasty. No, no. Please. I need to stay. 
This is gonna be ugly. Hi, Pearl. What is happening? You don't have to raise your voice. You pay you! I can give you half. You pay. Hey, don't talk to me like that, okay? I Look, I, I thought I was clear in my email that I needed a couple weeks. I worked too hard. Can I just get two more weeks? I want my money. You need to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of me cry. You be a bit fit. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing so good, Pearl. I put you on the street. Pearl. I'm gonna pay you. I, I, I'm working three jobs right now. I'm working nights. I'm driving a. I'm driving a cab. I'm inside with my buddy right now, just going over my resume. I'm gonna smack you. Okay. You know what? You need to relax. I got my money. Look, why do you need your money so fast? Come on. I need to get my drink on. You scare me. You're an alcoholic. Do I have some beers? Seriously, you are an alcoholic. Yeah, you're drunk. I knew it. You're already drunk. I'm just bad. You know, you're in no, you're in no condition to, to deal with this right now. Take my beer. You know, just take your beer and get out of here, okay? Yeah, we'll talk tomorrow. This isn't over. Come, Mommy. Jesus. <laughs> that was an Academy Award performance by Miss Pearl McKay. Miss Pearl oh, McKay can bring the goods. She can yeah. do it, can't she? Yeah. When Tom comes, she delivers. That is a big old slice of acting right there. <laughs> that, is. <laughs> that is indeed a tiny piece of big acting. Uh, Step Brothers in the theaters on Friday, July 25th. Much success. Great to see you. Great Thanks to see you. Again. Thanks, Thank you for Thanks coming. Thanks for having Pleasure. us.